Steve Davis here, Pathfinder School. Now, as you guys uh, may have seen, I made a video a couple months ago on my 18th century style woodsman kit, and we were comparing the 18th century 10 C's to the 21st century uh, long hunter mentality 10 C's. You know, the uh, well, basically everything worked out to be just about the same, just a little bit different, maybe uh, methods and materials. And a lot of people notice that I left out container. Now there's a reason I left out container. It's because I was still working on the best thing that was going to work for me. Um, there's what seems like not very many choices, but a lot of choices, <laughs> if that makes sense. You got to, uh, you know, put together, you know, a fine, finely made clay container existed in the 18th century, you know, but a woodsman you know in uh, western Pennsylvania or Kentucky or the Ohio country at the time probably wouldn't have had one <laughs> so you know you kinda gotta figure out that what's gonna work what's gonna be durable okay um, now you know in the Pathfinder system we always preach that a container should be metal you should be able to boil in it you should be able to make char in it so keeping that same thought process because that's what works I uh, you know worked out my choices on that so basically what I wanted to show you you know is the way I've been carrying water is this canteen here okay this canteen is an exact copy of one from Fort Ticonderoga it's made by a uh, company called Hot Dip 10 and he makes the fellow's name is Shea, and he makes exact copies of known artifacts, okay, as exact as he can copy them. Right down to this being hot dip tin and not electroplated. Now, I made this wool cover to knock the shine off of it, a little bit of the noise, and to, you know, help insulate it a little bit, and in warmer weather you can use this to take advantage of evaporative cooling. But basically, you know, this is just a tin canteen with a cork stopper. It's got a couple thimbles in the side. A uh, piece of rope would have been the traditional strap for this, but that starts to dig into your shoulder, so I just cut a leather strap. Now, choices could have been a wooden canteen. Looks like a, some of them look like a small barrel, and then, uh, you know, some of them are kind of look like a short squat small barrel and uh, some references call them rund, rundlets um, now that would have been a good choice it probably would have been durable but I wouldn't have been able to boil in it so that choice was out another choice would have been glass bottles okay I seen some references to glass bottles that had leather or cloth covers on them um, yeah, you probably could have boiled in it, but a glass bottle, if you ever seen me walk, you know, I'd, vertical is not always the position I'm in, so I didn't think I'd be very uh, durable, you know. Um, another choice could have been a clay container, a gourd, um, still not very durable, you can't boil in it, or what was known as jackware, which is leather um, lined with brewer's pitch, or a uh, wax but you know for me the the metal was obviously the way to go um, this is you know ooh, a year and a half old now and I'll, I'll tell you this tip okay I brought this home one Sunday night you know after being in the woods all weekend and I rinsed it out and set it in the dish drainer now my wife uh, picked it up you know, the next day when she's putting dishes away, put the cork in it and set it on the set it back with my stuff. What she didn't realize is there was still some water in here. Okay, now this is tin plated, and uh, you know up until that point it had never got a spot of rust in it. But with that water sitting in there, you know, just a little bit in the warm house, it got some rust in it. 
And I was doing some reading, and a fellow had wrote on a forum, the best way to clean the inside of one of these out is to take a handful of BBs, put it in there, and just shake it up. So, you know, I gave it a shot. I did that, rinsed it out a couple times, and uh, it was perfectly clean. So I got to thinking about that. You know, my Guyot bottle, which is, you know, the modern day equivalent of this, had some funk in it from being cooked in, and you know, it had uh, advanced glasses I had made char in it, so it had, you know, stuff in it, you know. <laughs> so, um, never seemed to kill me, but anyways, I did the same thing with a handful of BBs, you know, shook it up, rinsed it out, perfectly clean inside. It's about like you sandblasted it or something. So, you know, keep the BB trick in mind if you ever have a uh, metal container or whatever that's got some stuff in it, you need to get cleaned out. It's a uh, real good way to do it. Anyways, back to containers. Okay, so the other thing I keep down in my bag is a tin cup. This one is also made by Hot Dip Tin. Um, if you'll notice, you know, I mean, that's almost the same thing that you would buy today, you know. Um, my modern kit, I carry uh, all uh, Vargo cup, you know, the titanium cup. It's, a, you know, relatively the same thing. This is just a 18th century material and manner of being built. Um, one thing you got to think about with tin, though, okay, is this is all put together, uh, you know, rolled, crimped, and stuff, but it's sealed with solder. Now, hot dip tin uses lead free solder obviously that's the only variance from the original 18th century method that he uses to make stuff um, but what you gotta think about it you know if you put this in the fire anywhere you get that too hot that it's soldered that solder has a chance of melting so if you're going to use something soldered what I found out is works the best is to fill it completely that way there's water behind it to act as a heat sink and you don't have to worry about the solder melting and you know, if you don't stick it right down in the middle of a blazing hot fire, it shouldn't be a problem anyways. But anyways, that's the cup I've been carrying. Like I said, again, I can boil in it. I can make char in it. It's durable. It just is what it is, a tin cup. Okay, so something to cook in, right? Um, well, let me get this out of the way. I bought this pot. Um, Basically, this is like a company size pot. It would have been used by a uh, cook company of like four to six men. Everybody would have, you know, one guy would have carried it. Everybody would have cooked communally in this pot. This is about a gallon. This is also made by Hot Dip Tin. I'm not trying to turn this into a Hot Dip Tin commercial again, but <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, it's a gallon can. That, that's all I can say about it. It, um, uh, you know it works great we I've used it a number of times at camps when there's just more than me because really it's kind of large to carry for just myself but you know it is what it is it looks an awful lot like a gallon paint can <laughs> or uh, any of the modern billy cans you buy on the market today so you know same thing different uh, material methods okay the cook pot I've been carrying for personal use while uh, you know doing these little weekend treks and scouts and stuff is this one okay this is copper and it has a tin lining it's, you know metal bale handle on it it holds you know a little over a quart maybe I've never measured it exactly but it's a real good size um, you know it's open enough you can fry in it you can boil in it uh, do whatever you want you know uh, make your tea in it um, and it just is what it is <laughs> you know it's just plain and simple and I think uh, that's starting to become the theme of this is simple because simple works um, again you know you, you just can't reinvent the wheel sometimes so there guys there's my uh, containers I've been using uh, for my 18th century style uh, trekking I you know, hope I uh, 
give you a little bit of information and some comparisons to you know what worked then is still what works now so i thank you guys for all your views all your support i'll see you on the next one